Hi everybody, welcome to week 22. I decided to combine week 21 and week 22 together because really nothing happened in week 21. Um, the only thing I really had was some heartburn. So if you want to know what I feel like in week 21, just go back and watch my week 20 video because it's essentially exactly the same. So for week 22, baby is the size of a coconut. During month five, the average fetus measures about 10.5 to 11.8 inches and weighs 12.7 to 20.8 ounces. As baby grows, he or she may be expanding in your belly so much and so quickly that you might have some stretch marks. So for me, week 22 has brought on a whole new adventure. Um, and it's not that I'm feeling bad. I feel great. I have not been sick. I don't still don't have any cravings. I have no food aversions. So there's really nothing to complain about all that much. However, I do have this really weird new symptom and apparently it's a lot more common than a lot of people think because it's kind of embarrassing for some people, but um, I pee when I sneeze. I don't do it all the time. Uh, it's, you know, maybe once a day, if that, maybe not at all some days. Um, so kind of when I feel a sneeze coming on, I kind of have to brace myself and just kind of hold everything in there. Um, and most of the times when I do it, it's not a time where I feel like I have to go to the bathroom. Like, if I know I have to go to the bathroom and I'm going to sneeze, I kind of tighten everything up and I know it's coming. Um, but most of the times when I've had this problem, I have not had to go to the bathroom at all. Like, I don't feel the urge to go to the bathroom at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of interesting and it's kind of really annoying, but it's just one of those things I'm going to have to deal with, I guess. In the week 20 video, I talked about my hips hurting a little bit and now I'm also having some knee pain and some lower back pain. Um, and as a result, I am not supposed to walk or stand for more than 15 minutes at a time because my hips are out of an alignment and they do hurt really bad. So one thing that I'm doing now is I have this back brace and it just goes around my back and then underneath of my belly it just kind of like straps on and it's just Velcro. Um, there's nothing, you know, too fantastic about it, you know, it's just, just a regular kind of brace for pregnancy. Um, and I've only had it for one day and I did not do a lot of walking or anything so I really didn't have any way to test to see if it was effective um, and I I'm going to be doing some grocery shopping today so I will definitely wear it there and see if that helps me for right now and before I had the brace the way that I was relieving pain was to just sit down for a while and if I had one to sit on a heat pad um, that kind of helped things kind of ease the pain a little bit um, in my hips and in my lower back. My hips usually just hurt all the time though. It's not like if I walk it'll get a lot worse but even just sitting now or sitting all day long my hips do hurt always. The baby is hyper. That, I don't know, a hurricane. What is the best word to describe a child that is just going crazy? I don't know. It is so hyper. It kicks all day long, all night long. It's just always, always moving. And whenever I was exactly 22 weeks, which was yesterday, um, on Wednesday, the baby actually did like a full 360 in my belly. And I had my hands on my belly, both my hands locked like this on top of my belly. And I could feel the entire body just kind of flipping around. And I'm not sure if it flipped into a head first position or what it went into, but um, the heartbeat used to be able to be found on my right side, kind of right around my belly button. And now the heartbeat is a little bit more on my left side and it is pretty far down. Um, so I kind of feel like, you know, the head used to be up into my left side, like above my hip. And then the legs were coming down across the front to the right and then the feet were down by my right hip. But now it seems like the baby has kind of kind of instead of being up this way it's kind of flipped down this way because the feet and everything are still kicking around in the same area so I'm thinking it just kind of went from the head being here the feet being here and then just kind of like rotated down this way um, of course I'm not 100% sure I cannot see in there I can't see what it's doing but I can certainly feel it and um, it's I don't know it's kind of weird we still have both of our name boards on the wall the boy board has not fallen off again yet I hope it does not fall off again. We are working on putting some more names on the board. 
The girl name, we are pretty sure we know what we want for the girl's name, but the boy name, we're just... We don't know. I mean, we've gotten a bunch of things up there and it's just really hard for some reason for us to pick the boy name. Um, so I'm not sure. We are going to be picking the final decisions soon. As soon as we can figure out the boy name, we're going to be picking those. And then in the daily vlogs that we do, we will be removing the names. Starting soon, I was planning on removing one a week, but I've actually got more names on both boards than weeks I have left. So it might even get up to the point where we remove two a week or maybe we can get enough on there that we'll start removing them every day. I would like to do the name reveal around 30 or 32 weeks just because anywhere from 34 weeks on I could be induced and I do not want to start pulling names off of my board and then go into labor before we do the name reveal. Like that just wouldn't, that wouldn't be good. So I do want to make sure we do the name reveal early enough that you can see it before I go into labor. I feel like over this past week, I've gotten a lot bigger. Between week 21 and 20, I don't think I got that much bigger, like maybe a little bit, but this week I think I've gotten a lot bigger and my bump was kind of really low, but now it's starting to go up really high. And we did our gender prediction tests where we said the baby was really low, but now it's really starting to move up. So I don't know if maybe that vote for the boy needs to be changed to the girl. Or what? Maybe we just need to do another gender prediction video and see what happens later on. Maybe we did it too early. Um, so something that's really exciting that we did in week 22 is we bought a crib. And it is actually coming sometime today. I keep looking out my window to see if FedEx has come, um, but they're not here yet. And our baby room is still a disaster. So we are working on cleaning that up tonight. And then I'm not sure if we'll have time to build the crib tonight or not. But it is coming today and it's exciting and it's terrifying at the same time because my baby room is just right down this hallway and when you walk to the bathroom or you walk to the bedroom, if the baby room's door is open, you'll be able to see the crib. You know, the baby's going to be using that crib and the baby is still here in my belly, but it's like setting up the crib is like, you know, you have to do that. You know, the baby's going to sleep in a bassinet for a while, but... The fact that there's now a crib in our house means like there's definitely a baby coming and it's really kind of scary. Danny just, he's really cool with it. He's like, he doesn't think anything's really weird. Like I always ask him if, you know, like the baby's moving. Isn't that weird that like your child is in my stomach and it's moving around? And he's like, it's cool. And to me, it's like, it's so weird because I still feel like I'm that like seven year old girl running around in second grade. Like, I feel like I, I'm like, I'm not old enough to be having a baby. I feel like I'm still a kid. And it's like, you know, our lives are going to change so much. And it's so scary that that's happening. It's still just really hard for me to believe. I think another reason that it's just really hard to believe is that we were supposed to have such a hard time having a baby. Like, with my doctors and everything and just you know, my uterus isn't shaped right, my ovaries aren't in the right spot. It's like all my doctors were telling me how much of a hard time we were going to have having a baby. And I was only off my birth control pills for six months while we were trying to regulate my cycles because I had, I would bleed for 17 days. So we were trying to regulate my cycles and I don't even know if we effectively did that because I was only off the pill for six months. And you know, I was supposed to be off for a year and then if we got my cycles regulated after that year, then I was supposed to go on Clomid and different kinds of like fertility medications and treatments. And so I think the fact that it just kind of happened and we're over halfway there, but it was supposed to, like we weren't even supposed to be able to start trying until August. Like it's just, it's crazy to know that we're going to have a baby here around the same time that we should have been going on fertility medication. I guess week 22 is kind of slapping me in the face like you need to get your crap together and get moving um, because we really don't have anything ready for the baby um, and you know the baby hopefully is not coming today or tomorrow or anytime soon but still it's like I could be induced at 34 weeks if my blood pressure is really bad now it has been really good and I'll talk about that in a little bit but if my blood pressure does get really bad I could be induced, you know, 34, 35, 36 weeks, and I'm currently scheduled to be induced at 39 weeks on September 21st. 
So I think that the fact is that, you know, the baby could be here in 12 weeks if I have complications. And that is almost twice as long as I've been pregnant. And so it's like, we haven't done anything yet, but it's like, the baby could be here really soon. I mean, just by the end of the summer, the baby could be here. And so we just, we need to start doing stuff. So I mentioned about my blood pressure and my blood pressure was really, 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 really high at my ultrasound. Um, now, you know, that was kind of a slightly stressful appointment, but in all honesty, I wasn't stressed out and I wasn't upset. So, you know, I wasn't even, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't like overly excited or anything. So there wasn't really any reason why my blood pressure should have been as high as it was. And that was almost about as high as it's ever been in my life. It's only ever been higher one other time than that. And that was during one of my treatments for my cycle issue. And they actually tried to send me to the hospital that day because it was so high. But at this doctor's appointment, it was 145 over 98, which is just far too high for me. Um, they want mine to be like 120 over 70 or lower. And I've been taking my blood pressure twice a day, every day since then. And I mark it on my phone so my doctors can see it. And it has been really good. Um, there are some days where it's just like a little high, but it's not like dangerously high where I have to take extra precautions, but that could always change. Sometimes pregnancy can make your blood pressure go lower, and then as you start reaching the end, it can just shoot up, and that's what my doctors are afraid will happen to me, um, and that is entirely possible, you know, on my mom's side. She was induced because of high blood pressure. My aunt was induced because of high blood pressure. My grandma was induced because of high blood pressure. And it's just kind of the cycle. So I am entirely prepared for that to happen to me. And if that's what has to happen, then that's what has to happen. I'm not stressed out over it. You know, nobody wants to be induced or, or hear that there's complications with their pregnancy. But I know, you know, my family members that have done it have all been perfectly fine and everything's turned out well. I mean, I'm here. I can't say that I'm fine. You know, I'm a little crazy and weird, but, um, you know, I'm here. I'm alive. I didn't have any huge medical issues. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I'm totally at ease with it. And in my mind, I'm okay with that. If I need to be induced early to my blood pressure, because I'm just very familiar with that situation. So overall, so far this pregnancy has still been really easy. Um, I can't really complain a whole lot. I mean, I know, you know, my back's gonna hurt, my hip's gonna hurt, all that stuff, but I don't really complain about it. It's, you know, it's one of the things about being pregnant, but there's no point in going around everybody, oh, my back hurts, I can't handle this, or my hips hurt, and you know, you just have to do it. You know, I tell Danny all the time, like, my hips hurt really bad, could you do this for me? And he is, more than willing to get up and do whatever I ask him to do if I'm in pain because he doesn't want me to be in pain but you know at the same time it's like you know I mean we chose pretty much to have a baby you know don't do the action if you're not ready for the consequence so um but you know we're happy to have a baby the baby's coming we're really excited for it and I'm not going to sit here and dwell on the negative aspects of it you know pregnancy is great I haven't really had any major issues to complain about we're just staying positive with everything and you know I've only got you know a couple more months left now I mean it's not like this is the rest of my life I'm not gonna sit here with a basketball in my belly with severe hip pain and everything for the rest of my life so I just push through everything and keep going and that's really all I can do at this point and stay positive positive. and I think that's about it I really don't have much to report um, I can't think of anything else. So if you have any questions about week 22 or any of my other weeks or how things are going, certainly leave us a comment down below and we will reply back to you as quick as we can. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also find us on Facebook. I have my own Facebook page that you can follow me at for all of my DIYs and cosplay and everything else weird that I do. And we also have our shared Facebook page, Danny and Danny. And don't forget to check out our personal channels as well.